Hello and welcome to this video. We are installing a TBS Crossfire microtransmitter into a FR Sky Tyrannis X Lite remote control. The manual is based on the documentation of Clutrop FPV. A big thank you from my side. The link is in the description. The FR Sky X Lite is held together only by two screws, but mainly by click locks. Unfortunately, this makes a non destructive opening difficult. The two screws on the far left and the far right on the back of the remote control are removed. Then press firmly with a plastic spatula in the small gap. The lid can be removed with a little effort. Then we remove the FRSCAR transmitter module by loosening the four screws. Before we remove the module, we disconnect the antenna cable from the board. We now pull the module backwards and then up to remove it from the case. Unplug the module and this was it for the FRSCAR module. Almost. If you absolutely want to use the pots, you will have to remove them. You can save a lot of effort if you don't need them. After that we take out two more screws to remove the bracket. Unfortunately we cannot continue to use the bracket as the crossfire module is much larger than the FR Sky module. We need to 3D print our own bracket. Those who do not need the pots you can simply glue the module inside or trim the original bracket. Now we cut the zip ties and remove the bracket. To open the crossfire microtransmitter we first have to unscrew the antenna mount. Then we remove the two screws. The housing can be lifted on the side of the antenna, then it can be removed. We untighten the three screws the module is fixed with, then the module can be taken out by pushing the connector on the back of the module inside. The crossfire transmitter module is too high for the X-Lite, therefore we have to reduce the distance between the two boards. For this we cut off the pins on the side of the smaller board, where the plastic ends. Then we remove the cut pins, hence we remove the solder from all pins as good as possible. The pins can then be removed relatively easily by pushing them with a very hot soldering iron. With enough momentum they will fly away by themselves. Otherwise use pliers to pull out the hot pins. At the end of this step the holes should be completely free. Now is the best time to make the range mod. That's an increase from 100 mW to 250 mW transmitter power. I'll show you how to, but I cannot recommend it. So if you do not fly a long range, skip this chapter. For this mod we have to thank Liviu FPV, link is in the description. First the metal shielding is removed. To do this, heat the two solder joints and remove the shielding. The following procedure is on microscopic level. We have to remove the two resistors marked in red. The resistor highlighted in blue will be shortened. Either remove and replace it with a wire or a zero ohm resistor or just put a drop of solder on it. The 2K resistor marked in orange can be replaced with a 1.5K resistor. However, the gain is relatively small. When finished with that, solder on the shield again and we can continue. We now put the small board back on the big one. The board should have a distance of 4 mm. This allows to fit the finished module in the x slide and fit the antenna between the boards. Then solder all the pins again. This is what the modified crossfire transmitter module looks like. In this chapter we solder the connector to the module according to this schema. First the existing plug is detached. Remove solder, remove plug, remove pins. Ideally you will see the holes where we simply push the cable through and solder them. We recycle the 11 pin connector. The cables have to be extended or you use new cables with the fitting pins as I do here. The color choice is arbitrary. The cables are pre-tinned, dipped in flux and soldered according to this schema. Clatrop FPV provides a printing model on Thingiverse, link in the description. I use TPU, but recommend something harder. The modified module comes in the holder and is fixed with three screws. If you really need to use the pots, you have to remove them from the original board first. So again remove the solder and the pins. Then we need the 15 pin plug and four pieces of 10 cm long 30 AWG cable. We remove all pins from the connector except the first four. The 10 cm cables are cut in half and stripped at the bending point. That's the easiest way to build a sturdy Y cable. An approximately 1 cm long shrink tube is put on the cable before soldering. Then we build a kind of barb hook with the cable to thread the halved cable. The whole thing is then twisted before the connection is fixed with solder. Pull the shrink tubing over the soldering point and heat it to finish this step. The ends are now also stripped and pre-tinned. The cables are pushed through the bracket and soldered to the pots. For the blue and red cable, one part of the white cable is simply cut off. The pots are pressed into the holder and fixed with some glue. 
The antenna holder is pushed in between the two boards as far as it goes. You can fix the holder with a little hot glue. The modified module is now connected and the antenna holder pushed through the hole. The holder is pressed into the knobs. The antenna holder is screwed down as tight as possible. That's how it looks. As mentioned, if you can do without the pods, you save a lot of effort. You can even do without the 3D printed part. To finish, we put the cover back on and press it tightly so that the click fasteners engage. With the two screws we fixate the lid again. Just put the batteries in and the X-Lite Crossfire mod is ready. Welcome to OpenTX. We have now successfully installed the TPS Crossfire microtransmitter inside of a FRSky Tyrannis X-Lite. If this video was informative and helpful, I'm happy about a thumbs up and I'm especially happy if you subscribe to the channel.